Hello, Coastal Alabama Community College students. My name is DeAndre Laquarius Horton, and it was my intention to be there today to share my story with you, but due to circumstances, I was unable to travel, so I will be sharing my story with you through this recorded message. Now, I had wanted to do a speech or a talk, a discussion about mental health awareness and suicide prevention and awareness because it is a cause that is close to my heart because over the last few years I started being an advocate for mental health awareness and suicide awareness and prevention due to seeing how it affected of the people around me and how it taken a to how it had taken a toll on them as well as my own personal experience now just for a little background information about me I am a former student of coastal Alabama I graduated from there in 2017 and I can say that my time there really encouraged me and it helped me be able to find my voice when it comes to this cause. Now, the way it affected me, it started when I was little. But, you know, I wasn't really aware of it till I got older. But I knew from an early age that I was different from most other kids because of how I looked and viewed things from an emotional point of view. I always took things a little bit more seriously and I was more in tune with my emotions than you might say that most kids are. And for me, I was always a very shy person, kept to myself, uh, didn't really talk to many people. And you know, I've kind of stayed that way throughout my life, I'm kind of reserved and quiet but when I first realized that I was coming in close encounter with it was when I was about 12 or 13 years old. I was in middle school, seventh grade, and I had finally mustered up the courage to where I wanted to finally start talking to girls. And there was this girl that I liked, and I had told my best friend at the time, who had been my best friend, since kindergarten treated him well i considered him to be like family to me a brother and i didn't know that at the time that when i told him about my feelings for the girl that he would go on to go around the school and sort of lead this i don't want to call it a campaign because it really wasn't a campaign but he was the orchestrator of people talking about the girl that I liked because she wasn't one of the popular girls and she might not have necessarily been the prettiest girl, but you know, I liked her. And I guess he looked at that as an opportunity to poke fun because, hey, here's this quiet, reserved guy liking a girl who some people may not find to be attractive, so let's just make jokes off of it. And going throughout school, my years prior to that, you know, I had already been susceptible to seeing how isolation works when it comes to children. When you are not a part of certain groups or you're not a part of certain social crowds, that it makes you an easy target to be signaled out. So I endured isolation and, you know, other things I could know that people were talking about the fact that I liked this girl even though they wasn't they weren't necessarily saying anything about it to my face so I got to a point where my social anxiety about being around people and not being able to be a great communicator it began to show itself and I dreaded going to school that those seventh and eighth grade years, and it took a toll on me. It got to a place where one 
they had come in from school and it got to be around nighttime and I was just sitting there thinking, you know, maybe this is really it for me. Maybe it would just be better if I just wasn't here. And I seriously contemplated taking my life that night. But I didn't go through with it because for some reason, one way or another, something spoke to me that night. Something told me that this is not what you will be defined by. You will be able to come out on the other side of this. Don't let the people who have isolated you, who have overlooked you, who have underappreciated you, who have bullied you, don't give them power over you. And, you know, I was able to work through it. And I eventually got to a point where I was comfortable with who I was, not necessarily all the way, but I realized that I was in control of my future. I was in control of where my life would go. And I could choose to give these people power or I could do something about it. I could continue to live my life and show them that in spite of what they were doing to me or had done to me, it was not going, going to be the end of me. You know, and I graduated from my high school among the top 20 in my class. And then I come on to coastal Alabama and I was a part of numerous clubs and organizations. I was the vice president of recruitment for the Phi Upsilon chapter of my Phi Theta Kappa group. Then I was also the president of Scholars Bowl. And once we formed a team, I was captain of the team. I served on the Student Government Association as a senator, I was a tutor on campus, and I won a few accolades, such as the, out, the most outstanding campus leader, uh, I won the most outstanding student in the TRIO program, uh, and I was a Coca-Cola Gold Scholar. You know, these accolades, they afforded me opportunities and scholarships and another award that I won that was kind of a little feather in the cap was I was named an all-state academic on the all-Alabama academic team. The Coca-Cola award and the all-Alabama academic team afforded me scholarships. So... I can tell anyone that whatever you're going through, whenever you're being bullied, or if you feel like it gets to a point where you might consider taking your life, don't let that be the end of your story. Continue to fight because you don't know what's waiting for you down the road. And you know, since I graduated from Coastal Alabama, the plan was to go to Auburn University and to continue my education, but I've had to put that on hold. So while I'm anticipating a return to school, I've just continued to spread my message and, you know, tell people my story and, and, and try to put out positivity in the world because I believe that we see enough negativity as it is whether we're looking at the media or we're looking at the way things are going on in the world today. I'm also a part of a two-man group. We refer to ourselves as Extraordinary Gentlemen's Organization, or EGO for short, and we are looking to start going around the state of Alabama and doing these talks about mental health awareness and suicide prevention and awareness beginning the fall of next year. So, as I said, I may not be in school right now, but I have been keeping myself busy. And this here is my passion. 
being able to communicate with people, talk to people, and let them know that you are not your circumstances, you are not your past, you are not whatever anyone wants to throw at you in terms of your obstacles, your upbringing, your race, your religion, your beliefs. Whatever someone could use to put a label on you, don't allow those labels to be the thing that defines who you are. And I can say from a personal experience, given my time at Coast Alabama, I wouldn't be doing this video and doing these talks that I do today if it wasn't for two very important women. One who may be there in the crowd today looking at this video, Lee Overstreet Connolly. Most of y'all know her as the front woman for PTK and being a teacher there on campus. But you know, when she found out what my story was, she pushed me to you know, get out there and to share my story, and she saw something in me. She always told me that she felt like I had the potential to do anything that I set my mind to, and you know, I thank her for that, and she knows how much I appreciate her and I love her. The second woman who was kind of the, the forerunner behind all of this some of you may know they're on the Monroe for campus as well, although I'm not sure, of Miss Deborah Rankins, who now goes by her merit name of Miss Deborah Robinson. She was a confidant, an advocate, and she also pushed me to get out there and to tell my story because she told me about a young man who Thomasville does something in honor of every year with the Upward Bound students. Mr. T.J. McNair, and when I told her about my story and then she told me about T.J.'s, I kind of got the idea for this based off of how our stories shared some similar beats. So my ultimate encouragement is that whether you're a student there at Coastal Alabama and whatever you do there on campus, whether you are a part of Phi Theta Kappa or not, you're just a regular student that's just going there, getting your general education until you take the next step in your education, or you're a part of Phi Theta Kappa or some other organization, or whatever it is that you're using Coastal Alabama for. I know that people look at being on community college campuses and being in small towns, being educated, that mental health is something that, you know, doesn't really need to be talked about because, hey, it's a small town. It doesn't affect the small town the way it does those big time campuses. But I am here to say that mental health and being aware about suicide and trying to prevent it if you can, it affects us all, whether we're in a big city or a small town. So just take the time to show kindness to one another and be more loving to one another because you never know how far a kind word or positive reinforcement or encouragement goes in helping someone along because everybody's got something that they're struggling with. So we should aspire to be kind always. And like the great Maya Angelou said, try to be the rainbow in someone's cloud. And my message to those who are in the crowd today who are a part of Phi Theta Kappa, you are considered to be the leaders on the campus. You are considered to be the best that the school has to offer. Use PTK and use the opportunities it gives you as a springboard for a platform to connect everyone, those outside of PTK and those students who may not get another look otherwise. Try to bridge the gap between all the students on campuses and begin a more open dialogue and discussion about mental health and suicide prevention and awareness. Because I believe that if we can get 
as many people as possible on campus from all walks of life to come together, then the burden will be a little less and hopefully we can see an improvement in student morale. I would just once again like to thank Coastal Alabama for giving me this opportunity to share my story with you today. And like I said, uh, you know, I hate that I couldn't be there, but you know, I'm hoping that seeing this video, it encourages you all and it gives y'all the strength to persevere and to continue to fight. Because my slogan for this is hashtag fight the darkness because it's something that is an un well it's not unseen but it's often treated as is as an invisible thing but it's very powerful and i feel like we need to talk about it more because it affects people more than we may let on or even realize so hashtag continue to fight the darkness and if anybody out there would like to know about any of the other things that I have done in regards to this cause, check out my Facebook page at DeAndre Laquarius Horton or my YouTube channel at DeAndre Horton. And it, both of those social media platforms can tell you a little bit more about what I do as it pertains to the cause. So I appreciate you guys for hearing me out today. God bless you all. And remember, it's all about love. So let that be the driving force. Because love is the most powerful weapon we have against any form of darkness. Thank you all.